Hello everyone, welcome to Okta Network. My name is Jagdish Rathor and uh, I am a trainer in Okta Network for CCNA Routing and Switching, CCNP Routing and Switching, CCNA Service Provider and CCNP Service Provider. So the purpose of this lecture is to, you know, give you, to introduce you about the CCNA Service Provider syllabus as well as I will uh, give you one demo lecture, you know, one demo, one topic. I will give you a demo on one topic in this uh, session. So let's start with uh, you know the introduction part for uh, Cisco Service Provider Next Generation Network SPNGN1 Part 1, which is 640875 and CCNA SPNGN2 Part 2 640878. So let me uh, introduce you myself. My name is uh, Jagdish Rathod. I have 3.8 years of uh, experience in a multinational company as a network support engineer. I trained more than 10,000 students, which includes CCNA routing and switching, CCNP routing and switching, CCNA service provider and CCNP service provider. Recently, I worked with Dimension Data India Private Limited as a network engineer. I deployed many projects uh, because I was working in a Dutch bank. Uh, you know, I worked uh, as a both implementation engineer and troubleshooting engineer. If I talk about my certification examination, I am a CCI routing and switching written certified, CCNP routing and switching certified, CCNA routing and switching certified. If I talk about my academic background, I secured the first place in my MTech Master of Technology in a Computer Engineering from ARC University. I was the gold medalist and I secured the first place in Bachelor of Engineering Information Technology from Gujarat Technological University. So let's talk about the exam format for SPNG and one part one six four zero eight seven five. The test is editory test, which we you know it contains one paper to ninety dollar cost. Exam number will be six four zero eight seven five CCNA SPNG and one associate certification is CCNA service provider part one. Duration will be ninety minutes and it will contain sixty five to seventy five questions. Available language in English passing score will be eight forty nine out of one thousand. Question format will be single choice, multiple choice, and drag and drop. Now, let's talk about the SPNG N2 part 2640878 exam format. It is an additive test. Again, one paper to $90 cost. Exam number will be 640878. Associate exam certification will be SPNG N2. Duration will be 90 minutes, 65 to 75 questions. Available language is English. Passing score will be 849 out of 1000. And same exam. You know questions format as SPNG and one. Now let's talk about the CCNA SPNG and one course overview. That means the syllabus, which we includes the syllabus, you know, the syllabus in our SPNG and one as per Cisco blueprints. So in first chapter, we'll discuss about uh, you know basics uh, about networking, about you know uh, different devices, how it functions. Apart from that, we will discuss about the OSI and TCP/IP models. We will discuss all the layers from physical layer to application layer and we will do the comparison of TCP IP and OSI model. After that, you know, we will discuss that how to do the troubleshooting of uh, common network problems with the help of, uh, you know, a layer one, layer two, all the layers, which we call it, it is a layered model approach. After that, we will discuss about uh, LAN, WAN, MAN, its future, its advantages and its disadvantages. Let's come through the chapter number two. Chapter number two is very important in which we'll discuss about the IPv4 and IPv6 uh, addressing. If I talk about the IPv4, then in which we'll discuss about the VLSM, CIDR, supernetting, subnetting, root summarization, and many things. After that, we will differentiate what is the difference between IPv4 and IPv6, and we will you know design an IP subnetting plan based on our given requirements. In chapter number three, we will discuss about L2 technologies, that means switching technologies in which, you know, I will explain to you that how your, you know, L2 switch works, L3 switch works, what are the functions of your switching. So apart from that, we'll discuss about the port security as well as ether channel. In chapter number four, we will discuss about the routed network technologies. That means we'll start with a class full and class less routing in which, in which we will discuss about the IGP and EGP as well as all dynamic routing protocol, including RIP version one, RIP version two, RIP in IPv6. EIGRP in IPv4 and EIGRP in IPv6 on a normal Cisco iOS as well as on a Cisco iOS XR and XE routers. After that, we will discuss about the root redistribution. We will discuss about the VRF and GRE tunnel. Similarly, in chapter number five, we will discuss about the IP services, which includes NET, DSCP, ICMP version four and ICMP version six and DNS. In chapter number six, we will discuss about the 
you know we will perform some task we will you know do the lab on a cisco ios uh, normal ios as well as on cisco xc and xr uh, cli operation as well as we will implement basic cisco ios xr and xc router configuration in which we will start with the static default routing in uh, cisco ios xc and xr router apart from that we will configure all dynamic routing protocol in cisco ios xr and xc router next you know uh, move to the chapter number 7 in chapter number 7 we will discuss about the transport technologies in which we will discuss about the sonage sdh dwdm and uh, we will configure uh, different different ports uh, apart from that we will discuss you know uh, some new technologies that is frame relay atm metro ethernet dsl and uh, also we will discuss about the t1 t3 e1 e3 and isdn network continue with the same we will discuss about the devo csis as well as we'll discuss about the brs and bng router functions in ip ngn network apart from that we'll discuss about the po and stands for passive optical network let's come to the chapter number eight which is which you know it is very important because we'll discuss about the security in the network we'll discuss about the l2 security feature in a normal cisco io switches and we will configure management plan security on a cisco routers and ios switches apart from that we will discuss about the ipsec we will discuss about the you know control plan security the most important two model one is takax plus and one is radius server we will configure the server on a normal cisco router apart from that we will discuss about different group user group task group and you know task ids in ios xr router apart from that we will discuss about you know common types of network attacks in chapter number 9 uh, we will discuss about the network time protocol ip service level agreement cdp simple network management protocol netflow syslog call home future apart from that we will discuss about the ssh you know telnet out of band management uh, we will discuss about the switch port analyzer remote switch port analyzer and er span and uh, you know we will discuss about the file transfer uh, to manage network device configuration and so on so we already discussed about the exam format for spng and you know n2 that is part 2 let's talk about the syllabus of spng n2 so in which uh, you know the first chapter will be ip next generation architecture in which we will discuss about the function components of a network apart from that we will discuss the troubleshooting method and uh, we'll discuss different type of service provider apart from that we will discuss about the architecture and ip address and uh, autonomous system number allocation process via iana and iri in chapter number 2 again we will discuss about the switch network technologies but in depth in which we will start with the vlan stp rstp mstp pvst pvst plus on a cisco io switches we will discuss that how to create the vlan logically how to do a uh, inter vlan routing and we will configure vlan on cisco io switches configure the trunk inter vlan routing which include svi as well after that we will configure rep on cisco io switches and configure q in q on cisco io switches let's move to the chapter number three chapter number three is a routed network technology in which we will discuss in depth about ospf version 2 single area as well as multi area ospf version 3 route routing on a cisco routers we will configure basic single area ISIS routing on a Cisco router because in CCNA routing and switching and CCNP routing and switching, we never discuss about the ISIS protocol. So ISIS protocol is very important in service provider network. We will discuss about, you know, what is, uh, you know, static routing, what is dynamic routing, what is the difference between distance vector and link state routing protocol. We will configure basic BGP routing on a Cisco router. We will describe the you know I, uh, address family concept on a Cisco router. Apart from that, we will disc uh, discuss about the IPv6 transition, you know, uh, technologies. Um, uh, one more thing which is very important in networking field that is FHRP, first of redundancy protocol, under which we will discuss about the HSRP, VRRP, and GLBP. We will implement Cisco SCL on a Cisco routers. We will discuss about the you know carrier grade net and net 64. Apart from that, most important MPLS. We will discuss about the MPLS in SPNG2. Chapter number four, which contains you know the iOS XC and XR configuration software packages, and uh, we will discuss about the Cisco Service Provider Router Platform, their operating system, and the placement in a service provider IP network. So the purpose, as I told you, the purpose of uh, you know this. Uh, uh, lecture is to give you the demo. So today I will uh, demonstrate one demo on a VRF. Uh, what is a VRF? VRF 
stands for virtual routing and forwarding actually your uh, you know a vrf is a one kind of technology which includes in your ip internet protocol network routers which will allows multiple instance of a routing table to exist in router and work simultaneously let's you know uh, consider this uh, figure so as you can see over here i have one router one is you know uh, provider is router and uh, as you can see over here i have uh, you know uh, per vrf i have one routing table and one uh, one you know virtual routing table and one virtual virtual forwarding table <coughs> that means what that means uh, you know your uh, vrf your vrf acts like a logical router you know your vrf acts like a logical router your vrf virtual router and forwarding is a technology as i told you you know it is one kind of technology which you know allows to create to create to you know implement multiple instance of routing table multiple instance of routing table that means your vrf uh, you know routers that allows a multiple instance instance 1 instance 2 instance 3 of a routing table to exist in a router and work simultaneously that means it will allow to create a multiple instance you know it is provide you know with the help of this you know multiple instance uh, it will increase the functionality of uh, you know functionality by allowing a network path to be segmented without using multiple devices that means here i have only one device but it is creating a multiple instance so you know uh, because uh, the traffic is automatically segregated if you know it will create a multiple in instance that it automatically you know segregate the traffic it will automatically segregate the traffic just like you know your vlan uh, like you know in our l2 environment we created one vlan and uh, this vlan based networking uses a 802.1q trunks to extend the vlan between switches so your vrf based design your vrf based design use 802.1q trunks gre tunnels or mpls stacks to extend you know and uh, you know to extend in a vrf and the tie to vrf together now let's talk about this you know uh, figure here i have a one provider edge router p router and i have a three customer edge router blue red and yellow fine so whenever we talk about you know layer 3 mpls vpn mpls vpn your vrf virtual routing forwarding is a key component of your layer 3 mpls vpn it enables your provider edge router to appear to be a many routers to the customer edge routers that means your this provider edge router will appear you know it will many router for you know your customer and router why because here in this scenario i have a three c router three customer edge router one is blue one is red and one is yellow fine fine your provider edge router your p router will maintain a separate and distinct routing table for each customer that means this p router will maintain a separate table for this c router it will maintain one separate table for this red router red customer it will maintain one separate table for this yellow c router you know that means your p router maintain a separate and you know different different routing table for your each customer for each customer it will maintain one table each p router your each provider edge router you know it will build this unique routing table that means it will maintain a different different you know separate table for your each customer that means your p build this unique routing table with their own routing table mechanism for each customer that means here in this figure i have a 3 c and router three customer is router and inside your p router there is a one mechanism there is a one you know process through which it will maintain different different table for your different different c h router fine 
this kind of unique separation of routing table allow your p router to store the routes and forward packets even if your customer and router are using different ip addresses your customer and router are using identical addressing fine so vrf means what vrf is you know, one kind of technology in which your one router maintain a many you know uh, you know it will appear as a many routers for your customer and router so let's you know back to the our previous slide as we said this will increase the functionality by allowing network paths to segmented without using multiple devices because traffic is automatically segregated vrf it also increase the network security and it will you know eliminate the need for encryption and authentication mainly your service provider internet service providers isp tech advantages as well as they use the vrf to create a separate virtual private networks that means they use the vrf they take the advantage of vrf to create a separate vpn virtual private network for their customer so this is just a demo lecture i hope you guys you know enjoy this demo lecture after that you know uh, we will discuss about the uh, root rd uh, stands for root uh, distinguisher in which uh, you know i will explain you that uh, what is uh, root uh, distinguisher how it works and uh, what is the 64 bits what is the 32 bits total is 96 bits after that uh, one you know more important term uh, which is related to mpls l3 vpn that is root target in which we will discuss about the export rts and import rts how it works you know this uh, diagram shows the functionality and the working of your root target and the most important thing is vrf r d and rt configuration so the config you know configuration is uh, the differs on the you know ios uh, depends on ios if you are doing the configuration on 36003700 then you have to proceed with this configuration ip vrf a1 rd5001 colon 1 root target export and import if you are doing the configuration on 7000 series cisco routers then you have to go with this configuration we will discuss this all things uh, later on in our you know uh, ccns service provider session i hope you guys enjoy this demo lecture for more information kindly contact on 8976676689 you can reach out to us on email info at directoctanetworks.com you can reach out on our skype address that is octanetworks expert at directgmail.com for you know instant updates and for more updates uh, you can subscribe to us on our youtube channel that is www.youtube.com octa networks also you can follow us on a linkedin www.linkedin.com company octa networks as well as you can join our facebook group and you will you know uh, you can receive an instant update from octa networks so please follow us on youtube linkedin facebook and twitter thank you so much